Coming up next on Fit for Duty, we're in the weight room. If you've not been in the weight room, or if you have been, I'm going to give you some pointers here to get you through this workout that you may not be familiar with. We're just recruiting fibers from a different part, changing the angle, changing the exercise, and it's going to force him to get stronger. Come on, two more. Welcome to Fit for Duty. I'm Master Sergeant Mike Skaggs. I'm here with Senior Airman Matt Massoff from the Air Force Honor Guard. We're in Bowling Air Force Base Fitness Center, where today we're going to do our general strength training workout for chest and back in the weight room. And again, as I said, if you're not comfortable with the weight room, don't worry, we're going to get you there. Matt, are you ready? Yeah. Ready? All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to load up the weight bar. I've already talked to Matt. Matt, go ahead. And we determined that he's going to do, for general strength training, it's three sets of eight to 12 repetitions. For Matt, we're going to go with about 70% of his max weight with his 225. So Matt, let's go ahead and put our plates on. You and a partner always want to load the bar together and evenly. If not, Matt loads his before I load mine. The bar can fly up and hit us in the face. And then of course, we always want to put our collars on for safety so they don't slip off should Matt lose control of the weight, which he's not going to do because I'm going to be there to spot him. All right, Matt, go ahead and position yourself on the bench. If you've, if you've not been in the weight room or if you have been, I'm going to give you some pointers here to get you through this workout that you may not be familiar with. And what we want to do when we're on the bench is I want to make sure that he's got his shoulder blades pulled back and a slight arch in his back. Never want that flat back on the bench. That's really bad for the lower back here. Now, when Matt brings the bar down, he's also only going to go to about 90 degrees. He's not going to go all the way down. Got it, Matt? Yep. All right. Ready to get this started. Now, Matt's grip is going to be, there's always two little marker spots on a bar. He's going to be just inside those, so he's not too wide and not too close. Too close is going to focus a little bit too much on the triceps. Too wide is going to put some strain on the shoulders. So I want it just a comfortable, part, comfortable distance apart, and I'm going to lift it off with him. Go ahead, one, two, three. Position it just above his chest, right in the center, and go ahead, Matt. Lower to right about there. No, it's too low, so I want him to stop right there. Go ahead and push up. There's one. Come down. Two. Good, slow. Three. Four. You counting here, Matt? I'm trying to talk. Now what we want to do is we want a nice slow tempo here, about a seven second repetition, slight pause at the bottom. So three seconds down, three seconds up, slight pause at the bottom. That gives us seven seconds. Where are we at, Matt? Nine, ten, two more, eleven, and twelve. Good job. Let's go ahead and rack it. We'll give a little break. Matt, if you want to, you can stretch out. You can stretch a little bit out. And what we want to do here, again, we're focused on general strength training, three sets of eight to twelve. Matt, was that weight good for you? Yeah. That's perfect. That's what we want. We want a slight exhaustion towards the end of the exercise. And that, with that momentary failure in muscle, that's going to allow Matt to get stronger as we go along. Again, general strength training, this isn't building muscle. It is somewhat, but we're not going for the bodybuilder type look or power lifting type look. We're just going for general strength here. All right, Matt, let's go ahead and go back. Come off and go ahead and go down. Again, stop it at 90 degrees and come up. Four, five, six, exhale, seven, don't hold your breath. You notice your partner's getting red in the face. You can see he's starting to shake a little bit. Twelve. Now a key for realizing when they're too tired to go on is when their form starts to go. Go ahead and set up Matt. So we've done our flat bench. We're going to go ahead and move over to the incline press. Okay, for our next exercise in this chest workout, we're going to do an incline press. Now, with this, we're going to decrease the weight a little bit because the angle is going to force us to. And again, we want to keep the right amount of weight on there so he gets a good amount of exercise in and the right amount of reps, but we don't want him to lose his form. That is the key. Form is the key. Time under tension is the key component of any muscle training, strength training. All right, so we're going to load up the bar again, do it about the same time. Safety first, always put these collars on 
Don't want them falling off during the exercise, and he's going to go ahead and get on the bench. Remember what I said about the flat bench, same thing here. He's going to lay back, pull those shoulder blades back just slightly, and get that nice natural arch in his lower back. All right, Matt, we ready to start this one? Yeah. Again, we're looking for 8 to 12 reps here. He wants muscle failure right at the end of these, this set. One, two, three. Now, since this is an incline press, he's coming down right across the upper part. Go ahead, Matt. Coming down right, right there, come up. No, no lower than that. Again, I'm going to put my fingers here. He can concentrate on squeezing my fingers. Nice, slow reps. Don't want to lock out those elbows at the top. Focusing on the upper portion of his chest. Now, those pectoral muscles are one large muscle group. Where are you at, Matt? Seven. There's eight. We're just recruiting fibers from a different part, changing the angle, changing the exercise, and it's going to force him to get stronger. Come on, two more. One and two. Don't forget to breathe. Go ahead and lean it back. All right, now he's going to need about a minute of rest. This is a moderate amount of weight. The higher the weight, the longer the rest period should be in between sets. The lower the weight, of course, the shorter the time. That's more of endurance. The higher the weight is more strength. And of course, when you're under that much intensity, you're going to need a little bit more rest time for this. This is moderate, one minute or so in between sets. Matt, how you feeling? Going good. Okay. Now, if you've been in the weight room before, and this sounds a little different to you, trust me on this one, you're going you're gonna to get more gains out of this type of workout than you normally do by following my cues. All right, Matt, let's go ahead and line up on the bar. One more set, one, two, three, off right across the upper portion of that chest, and go. Again, keeping that 90 degree angle, he's breathing out, he's exhaling on the exertion. I can feel his pectorals under tension, that's a key component here, time under tension. How we doing, Matt? Good. Where are we at? Six. Seven. There's eight. Come on. Nine. You can see him getting a little bit weaker here. We got three more, so I'm going to come up here and make sure I spot him. There's ten. Two more. Push hard. Eleven. One more. Twelve. Go ahead and lean it back. All right, we're going to wipe off the bench, and we're going to head over to the decline press. Okay, for our next exercise, we're going to do a decline press, and we're going to go ahead and wait up for that. Now, with the decline, because of the angle, we're going to actually be able to do more weight than we did on the incline or the flat bench. So, Matt and I are going to go ahead and weight it up here, 45 and a 25 on there. Again, safety with the collars. Matt's going to go ahead and lay down and get ready. Again, pull those shoulder blades back, nice arch in that lower back. We good, Matt. All right, now, as a spotter, I'm here, go ahead and lift it off, Matt. We're going to go across the bottom part of our chest here and go ahead, 90 degree angle here, a little bit. Stop right about there. Keep that time under tension. My job as a spotter here is safety. I want to watch and make sure Matt's doing okay. I can coach him through the exercise and I'm going to help him anytime he gets weak. What number are we on, Matt? There's seven, eight. Good. Nine. Come on, Matt. I'm going to help him here. Going to go 10, 11, 12. Go ahead and lean it back. We're going to get that one minute rest period here. And now, if you notice, he started getting a little bit weak through the latter part of that exercise, that latter part of that set. And that's when I was able to step in and assist. I don't want to start assisting too early because that's not conducive to Matt's gains here. We want Matt to do as much of this on his own as possible. Now, to be honest with you, it's not a lot going on on my part. I'm just assisting him a little bit. It's more mental than anything, but it's able to help him get through and complete the number of reps that we want for this strength training, which is 8 to 12. All right, Matt, we ready to go again? Yeah. He's got that minute rest period. Again, we're focusing on the whole chest here. We've got the bench press where we come across the middle. we got the incline where we're on the upper part. And now we're on a decline. Oh, we're getting all that pectoral muscle. It's one big muscle. We're just recruiting fiber from different areas of that pectoral muscle. One, two, three. He's off. He's across the bottom part of the chest. Go ahead. And again, you notice I'm here. Now I'm just watching. Don't forget to breathe, Matt. Okay. Now we're towards the end of this chest workout, so I got to step in a little bit earlier. Again, not a lot here for me. There's seven. Come on. Let's get three more. Eight. Two more. Okay, go ahead and lean it back. Matt kind of petered out towards the end there. 
we stopped it, that's what we want. You don't want to continue to go on. You want to force yourself to go a little bit beyond your limits, but not to the point where it's unsafe. So Matt, we've got a good chest workout here, general strength training, three sets, eight to 12. That's your goal for strength gains, just general strength gains. Coming up after the break, we're gonna get hit our back. Grab some water, we're gonna towel off, put our weights up, that's good gym etiquette, and we'll see you at the back machine. When's the last time you strengthened your toes? It almost sounds silly. Our feet simply don't get the same attention. Welcome back from the break. We're going to continue our strength training workout for our chest and back. I have a new victim, Staff Sergeant Jorge Cortillo from the Air Force Honor Guard. Jorge, are you ready to get started? Yes. All right, first exercise we're going to do for the back is a lat pull down. Now you'll notice we're not in a traditional lat pull down machine, so we do not have the knee pads here to kind of hold you down. So you're going to have to adjust your weight if you're in a machine like this, but that's fine. That's good for this exercise because what it's going to do is it's going to force him to work a little bit more of his core and stuff like that to stabilize his body so he doesn't over rely on the pads. And Jorge, go ahead and I want you to, we talked during the break, I want you to show me a behind the neck pull. Folks, if you see this going on, that's the wrong way to do this exercise. Okay, that's enough. His, his spine is compromised, heads forward, and he can bang the bar into the back of his neck. So what we want to do with this lat pull down is just come right down in front of the chest. Again, using that 90 degree rule here. Good, nice, slow, about a seven second rep. You can see here, if I'm cueing him as a spotter, I'm right here, I'm, this is his lats, this is what we're working, his head and neck are staying straight. He's coming down to right about 90 degrees and pulling it straight down. Think chin up. If you're at home, think of chin up. This is what you're doing, that chin goes just over the bar and then right back up. 12 and go ahead and set her down, rest. Uh, again, we'll take about a minute rest here. That's a moderate intensity, moderate rest period here. Again, if you're going higher on the weight, you're going to need a longer rest period. For a lower weight, less rest period. We're not going for endurance, we're going for general strength training. That feel good to you? Yes. Let's go ahead and increase it because I can tell that was a little easier. I'm going to bump him up. Jorge, grab that bar. Again, he's grabbing it. At a comfortable distance for him, not too far, not too close. I have shorter arms, so I'd probably be in a little closer. Whatever works for you, go ahead and let's go. Again, we're looking for 8 to 12, general strength training. Not so much weight that it's pulling him up because he doesn't have those knee pads. I'm focused on his latissimus dorsi here, and he's stopping just before he hits the chest. Think chin up, a little bit slower. Really concentrate on that eccentric motion and concentric motion. That means you lower the weight and you lift it. Where are we at? There's eight. There's nine, 10, 11, and 12. Good job, go ahead and, and rest. We're gonna switch to our next exercise now. For our next exercise, we're gonna do a low row, so we're gonna have to switch out our bars, and we're gonna have to lower our pulleys here. I'll switch out the bar, Jorge, if you go ahead and lower handles. Put it on about 16 there. It's a low row. Back is a lot of muscles, trapezius, rhomboids, latissimus dorsi, they're all back there. You gotta hit the back from different angles to get all of them in. Now, for this exercise, you traditionally see a lot of people do this wrong, be either leaning forward too much when they lower the weight. See how his back is sort of compromised? We, again, we keep that back nice and straight, shoulder blades pulled back, he's up nice and so Now go ahead and begin your exercise, Jorge. And this keeps the tension on the lats the trapezius, the rhomboids, his rotator cuffs, everything's getting involved and he brings it right into his lower gut and takes it right back out. That head and neck stay straight and neutral. And again, we're looking for eight to 12 repetitions. How are we doing, Jorge? Eight. Nine, 10. As a spotter here, if he needs some help, I'll go him around and I'll just grab right here and help pull back. Good, go ahead and lower it, let's rest. Again, one minute rest period here in between sets. It's moderate weight, moderate rest period. Higher weights require longer rest period. The muscles got to recover. And lower weights, of course, require less time. So let's go ahead and get ready to go again. Jorge, go ahead and grab that handle. Straighten that back, head and neck neutral. Go ahead. It's going to be one. There's two. Now, you can see he's got some nice biceps here, but this, he's getting a little bicep flexion in here. This is a compound exercise, and we'll go to some single joint exercises in future shows, 
But for your chest and back exercises, they're compound exercises. You got a lot of joint motion, a lot of muscle action going here because you got a lot of different things at work. How are we doing, Jorge? 10, 11, and 12. Go ahead and rest. All right, good job. We've done our lat pull, we've done our low row. Now we're going to move into a bent over row with a dumbbell. So, leave that there. I'm just going to go ahead and move the bench out of the way. Corey, go ahead and grab that dumbbell there. Now, I'm going to show you how I want you to set up for this. You see a lot of people kind of go on a bench for, for a dumbbell row. This one, not so much so. We want you right here, and you're just rowing in, sort of like you're starting a lawnmower, okay? He's just going to use this to brace himself. You don't need a bench when you're doing these. Go ahead, pick up the weight, Jorge. Let's get that back nice and straight. Good. Now, go ahead and row it up. Bring it right into that lower chest. Don't lower all the way. Don't drop that shoulder. Stop it right about there. This is going to force a lot of tension on this latissimus dorsi. He's really getting some bicep flexion here. That head and neck stay neutral just like that. Great form. How's that feel? Now, if I was to spot him, spotter is always for safety. You help him through the weakest part, and you help him in case they're going to drop the weight. I'll just come around here, and I'll just simply lower the weight. I want to make sure his form is good. How are we on that one? All right, go ahead and lower the weight. Again, he puts the weight on the ground softly. Don't see him dropping the weight. That's gym etiquette. Don't drop the weights. And let's go ahead and switch sides. Here, he's going to go ahead and pick it up. Go. Now with this exercise, you're going to need less rest period because you're going diff opposite sides. So while one's resting, the other one's working, and you can go back and forth, and you can move through this exercise fairly quickly. Again, we're hitting all the back, any back that we, any part of your back that we missed in today's exercises. Jorge, where are we at? Nine. Go ahead and keep that head and neck neutral. Ten. Eleven. And twelve. All right, we just finished up our first set. We're going to continue on with our second set. At home, we're going to head to the break. If you want to continue working out with us, do so. If you need to get a drink of water and towel off, do that. We're going to finish up this back workout here with Jorge. Go ahead and bend over and grab that weight, Jorge. Go ahead and square your shoulders up and begin. Again, don't drop that shoulder. Nice. Limited range of motion, optimal range of motion. Really good. Great form, Jorge. Great form. There's eight, nine. 10, come on, give me two more. 11, keep those abs nice and tight. 12, go ahead and set the weight down. Switch sides. Slightly varied stance here. Get ready. In five, four, three, two, go. Good. Hi, I'm Captain Bree Newman, registered dietitian for the US Air Force. So you wanna live a healthier lifestyle, right? I've got five things that I feel are important for eating good eating habits. Number one, fruits and vegetables. We know they're important. We know that we should be eating more of them, especially the green vegetables. So we need to make it more of our daily routine. Pack them in your lunchbox, pile them on your sandwich, and make sure you include them with each meal. Number two, fiber, fiber, fiber. A good carbohydrate is determined by, by its fiber content. Fiber is filling and requires our body to use its internal energy to digest it. So you should be looking for starches and grains that have more than three grams of fiber per serving and cereal with more than five grams of fiber per serving. Number three, rest is best. More and more research is showing the positive weight loss benefits of adequate sleep. Sleep rebalances all those hormones that, draw, that are, are holding on to our fat stores. Do your body some good. Strive for those eight hours of sleep and you'll be surprised at how much better you feel. Number four, lots of activity, lots of exercise. Americans don't move enough. Those 30 minutes of exercise a couple days a week isn't going to cause you to or help you to lose that weight. So strive for exercise that's at least 45 minutes, four to five days per week. Number five, limit eating before bed. Try to avoid eating about two hours before you go to sleep this might mean you stop eating at eight o'clock. That's okay. This is good for stomach health, good sleep habits, helps your weight loss, and improve your chance of eating breakfast in the morning. Now you're on a path to a healthier you. Together, let's train smart and stay strong.
I'm Commander Dave Kemblish, orthopedic surgeon and team physician at the U.S. Naval Academy. Some experts claim that modern shoes are making our feet weak because the fancy arch supports and thick cushions do all the work. I wouldn't blame the shoes as much as the modern lifestyle, but I do agree with the general statement that modern living and modern shoes have contributed to the human foot becoming somewhat weaker. Our ancient ancestors and certain primitive tribes living today probably have stronger and more versatile feet than most of us. Most of us do some stretching and strength training, but when's the last time you made it a concerted effort to stretch or strengthen your toes? It almost sounds silly, but why should it? A violinist has strong and nimble fingers, and a carpenter has powerful hands because they work those muscles on a daily basis. Our feet simply don't get the same attention. Pretty much, we just stuff them into our shoes and ignore them. Here are a few simple exercises that will help keep your feet strong and happy. Isometric toe points and toe curls. Pinch your toes together and point them as straight as possible. Hold for five seconds. Next, curl your toes as much as possible and hold for five seconds. Do 10 sets of each. If your foot cramps up, pause, stretch it out, and do it again. But don't quit. As the toe muscles get stronger, the cramping will occur less frequently. Toe squeezers. Place a wine cork between your toes, one at a time, and squeeze for five seconds. Do a couple of sets on both feet. Toe spreads. Place a few thick rubber bands around your toes and spread them as far apart as possible. Hold for five seconds. Do 10 sets on each foot. Golf ball rolls. Roll a golf ball under your bare foot on the floor for two minutes to give the foot a deep tissue massage. Every 30 seconds or so, try picking up the ball by curling all your toes. Hold the ball for five seconds before dropping it and repeating. Towel curls. Place a small towel unfolded or a newspaper out on the floor and scrunch it up into a ball by curling your toes. Relax and repeat five times on each side. Remember, strong feet are happy feet, so move those toes. Together, let's train smart and stay strong. That'll do it for this Fit for Duty. I'd like to thank Matt and Jorge, my two trainees, for this exercise segment. Thank you at home for joining us. Thanks to the Bowling Air Force Base Fitness Center for allowing us to use our gym. And you be sure to join us next time as we get you Fit for Duty.